everyone, welcome back to another video where today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Doctor Who concert that happened last night and the little interesting nuggets that came out of it. Now unfortunately I wasn't able to attend this concert, much to my own dismay, however some very interesting stuff has come out of it, including the fact that the brand new theme tune and themes for the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday respectively were both played at the event, as well as the fact we've got a reunion between all three of the showrunners and several quotes from Russell T. Davis himself with regards to the future of Doctor Who that I find extremely interesting. So we're going to be diving into all of that. But before we get into it, if you could do me a teeny tiny little favour and click that subscribe button, it'd be very much appreciated. We are trying to get 21,000 subscribers as quickly as possible, and we're only like 60 subscribers away. So if you are new and you enjoy Doctor Who content, feel free to subscribe. That'd be absolutely wonderful. But with that said, let's get into the video. So Russell T Davis shared this last night. It's the three showrunners together at the concert. So you've got Russell T Davis in the middle there, Chris Chibnall, and Stephen Moffat, which I've got to say, you know, regardless of what you think of any individual one of their work, it's kind of mad seeing them all together. It is sort of like seeing three incarnations of like a Time Lord in one room, and I can't imagine what it would be like to see them all together. Like that's so bizarre to me. And apparently they were all bopping along to all the different songs in the show because they played various different tracks from across the show's history, classic and new who. So yeah, it just, it was wild to see them all together. That's absolutely amazing to see. But yeah, I think it just shows how close these guys are as friends. And it's just really nice. But here's the big thing. We got three music exclusives at the 60th concert. The new theme, the 15th Doctor's theme, brackets energy, I presume maybe that's the title, or maybe that's just what they were describing it to be, I'm not sure. And then three, Ruby Sunday's theme, The Life of Sunday. Russell confirmed Ruby will play her own theme on the piano. So this ties in a little bit with what we've been hearing about potential musical episodes. Obviously, in fact, Jinx Monsoon's character is very piano-focused, so perhaps it could tie to that episode, perhaps the 60s one as well, because obviously... That seems to be the one where Jinx Monsoon is involved. We've got that scene of them that was filmed, that we know was filmed a while back, of them on Abbey Road and all that sort of thing. So yeah, that was really cool to see that the Ruby Sunday's theme will actually be played in the context of the story, much in the same way that uh, I believe Peter Capaldi plays Clara's theme at the end of Hellbent, I want to say. And I think that just goes to show like Murray's kind of power as a kind of composer that his themes are so strong, they make their way back into the like universe of the show. I think that's really, really fun. And yeah, on the topic of the actual themes, because obviously some people have actually heard them, thanks to whole universe to this, who was also at the event, Millie's is called The Life of Sunday, I think. Hard to take it all in, not 100% sure. Shooties has a real mix of the other Doctor's themes, but with sax and brats, the new theme is mostly a mesh of series 1 to 4, with a bit of 11s, bit of 12s and saxy bits on top. Yeah, so these are kind of the anecdotal kind of descriptions of the themes from onlookers. Now apparently the themes themselves have leaked or someone did record them but I haven't seen any links to those. There will be a BBC Radio sort of broadcast of this concert I believe on the 15th of October. Hopefully they don't cut out the new themes. That is one thing that I saw a lot of people being concerned about this idea of oh will they cut out the new themes. Hopefully they don't. It seems to be running for the full two hours. I know that the show itself did run over somewhat, but apparently that was because there were lots of stops and starts, changing instruments, that kind of thing. So I am hopeful that the new themes get played in full and they aren't left out of this broadcast release. Apparently as well, it has been confirmed by BBC now that there were some film cameras on the set, so they're going to use it for their social media as well as possibly another BBC platform and we'll announce it here once confirmed. So maybe that'll mean, you know, we'll get a full visual version maybe in Doctor Who Unleashed. They might show some of this concert. Apparently, I heard some mumblings that there were people from Unleashed interviewing the guests of the event. The idea of brass and sax for Shooty, I love that. I love something energetic and upbeat for Shooty. Makes total sense. I'm interested to know what the theme actually sounds like. From what they're describing, it seems to be more of a pacey version of the theme akin to series one to four. Obviously, I have heard conflicting stuff on this. I've heard some people say it, it sounds like the series one to four. I saw someone else say it sounded a bit like a TV movie with a bit of the sort of like epic scale of, of that score. So I'm unsure exactly what it sounds like. I'm hoping, like I say, we hear it on October the 15th. 
But that's not the only thing I wanted to go over from this concert. So as far as I can tell, as well as the soundtracks themselves, the showrunners were kind of being interviewed across different segments. I think in between the different songs playing, they'd be interviewed a little bit, asked questions. And interestingly, RTD implied the lack of an obvious successor to Juvenal caused him concern and played a part in his decision to return. He gave the impression that he thought Doctor Who could have been headed to hiatus without a showrunner who was suitably experienced and also a fan. So this kind of confirms something that we've long since been speculating about, this idea that there was no strict succession plan in line post Chibnall, and Chibnall himself has said, and he'd been very open about the fact that as far as he was concerned, the paradox could well have been the final episode of Doctor Who. And it's only really because Russell T. Davis stepped in that we have this new era to begin with. And I thank him for doing so because everything just seems to be going apace now. And that wouldn't be the case without RTD. So yeah, I think that's an incredibly important thing to acknowledge. And yeah, it's nice to just have something that we've long since been speculating about now confirmed from the horse's mouth. I'd say the horse's mouth. It's been, you know, reiterated by someone who heard it from the horse's mouth, but you get what I'm saying. And then Lauren, who is actually a friend of mine, said, RTD did mention last night about how the BBC made the decision to bring Doctor Who to a streaming service, gave it a bigger budget and made it bigger before he came along. Part of his decision that he wanted to ensure with Doctor Who being partly given to these bigger services, someone was in the front seat who knew what they were doing with the show and what it entailed and what it was like. So he's there to ensure it still is the show we know and love, despite it being on a bigger scale to some degree. This is actually another great point. I know a lot of people have kind of expressed concern over the Disney influence on Doctor Who, which, to be honest, I think is a very interesting conversation, but I think it's really nice to see that one of RTD's core reasons for wanting to come back was basically to ensure that Doctor Who's core remains pure, I guess, that it still stays like Doctor Who. And I think when we talk a lot about the idea of, oh, should have someone else who was new taken over instead of Russell, I think the idea of getting someone established to handle that transition to streaming makes a lot of sense because you want to retain the show's identity. You know, I wouldn't trust Disney on their own with Doctor Who, you know, as much as I'm glad that Disney is basically fronting the money to give Doctor Who this bigger budget and bigger scale. I don't trust them on their own. I've seen Star Wars. I've seen what's happening with the MCU recently. No. So it's really good, actually, to see that RPD was there to be. I'm going to make sure that this all goes right. And it's actually given me a lot of, I suppose, confidence in this era going forward that it's not going to be too influenced by these bigger companies, these big American companies that might strip away the soul. Not that I thought that would happen anyway, because I know RTD has been very open about the fact that he is very much the creative head, so I always thought that it was still going to be Doctor Who, and I mean, if you look at any of the trailers, it still feels like Doctor Who, but just hearing that, yes, part of the reason I came back was to make sure it retains its identity, I was really happy to hear that. Speaking of things I was very happy to hear about, one of the things he said was, Murray's music gets to the soul of Doctor Who. Maybe I'll write an episode without any dialogue at all, just music. Which is also funny because, as I mentioned earlier, we have heard rumours of a musical episode, so who knows about that. But, said Doctor Who said, Interestingly, he also said, Maybe I could write it for season four. Season four meaning his fourth season back in RTD2. Not series four with DT. Showing his long-term thinking for the show and hopefully that he'll be back here for a while again. Now, obviously, to some degree, it's difficult to kind of tell how much of this was a joke. You know, maybe he's saying, oh, maybe we'll do it with the fourth series. He's sort of saying, like, oh, that's so far away. But if the fourth series is already on Russell's mind, and he is being serious that he plans to do at least four, that's very exciting to me that Russell T. Davis could be planning to do at least four series in the lead position. I... Remember seeing some people worried when he was announced that, oh, what if he only does, say, the 60th and Series 14 gets the show back off the ground and then leaves again? Will that be able to sustain itself? I'm glad he's staying for a long stint, pretty much as long as his original, if not longer, if this is to be believed. And I think it makes total sense. When you look at the things that have been announced, when you look at things like Unleashed, you look at his talks about spin-offs, it doesn't read like someone who's in it for the short term. It looks like someone who is wanting to build, as he's put into his own words, build back the Empire again. So I was really happy to hear that he's already thinking about a fourth series. 
for RPD series, that would be like an absolute dream for me. I hope as well that, that would give him enough time to basically train up a successor so that we don't have what happened this time where there wasn't really a successor in place. I want it to be like the Russell T. Davis to Stephen Moffat transition where there is very much a planned succession sort of going on rather than just, oh, I don't know, we'll try and get someone at the last minute. I want Doctor Who to be in safe hands and it seems like it is which is really good to see. Murray Gold said, Ruby is a lost soul searching for her parents. So this confirms an earlier rumour that a lot of us have been speaking about, about Ruby Sunday being adopted. And a lot of people have drawn comparisons between this and obviously the Thomas Child adoptee storyline from the Chibnall era. Maybe they will play on that. If they were going to play on the Thomas Child in any way, I would prefer it be something like that as opposed to the actual lore itself, because I don't really want Gallifrey and Law being brought up again. But to be honest, I feel as though people might be stretching a bit, like I don't expect it to come up loads. But it's very cool to see that this is being confirmed. Ruby Sunday is an adoptee, I think as a companion, as a very interesting sort of storyline to tell. And it kind of does remind me of that scene in Team of the Cybermen where Victoria and the second Doctor are talking about family. And I hope we get a scene like that between Shisi and Millie. I think that'd be absolutely wonderful. I've seen the finale of Sex Education 4, which I do have mixed opinions about. Maybe I'll do a video on that someday. But one of the best scenes in that entire show is towards the end when he's basically having a talk with a certain character and he felt very doctory in that scene. So I'd love to see another sort of moment like that within the series. I think that would be really, really cool to see. Congratulations to everyone who managed to go to this event. It looked absolutely fantastic. I do hope if they do more events like these in the future that they give out more tickets or they hire a bigger venue because obviously, as I mentioned in a previous video, this was raffle based. I didn't manage to get in. Just one of those things. I would have killed to go, but there we go. But it looked amazing anyway. I hope everyone who went had a fantastic time. Obviously, I'm probably missing bits and bobs out here. Like, I know someone mentioned that Stephen Moffat and RTD were having a bit of banter about the flying shark in Christmas Carol and other bits and bobs like that, which is really, really funny. But whatever your thoughts are, drop them down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about all these little details. Honestly, the main things I take away from this is the new themes sound incredible, which I'm very, very glad about. Not that I'm surprised, because it's Murray Gold and he always kills it. Ruby Sunday is a confirmed adopted, I guess, child, and the fact that RTD may very well be staying on for at least four theories, as well as the fact that the succession plan for the showrunners was not very much set in stone, and Power of the Doctor, once again, could have been the final episode before Russell basically swooped in and went, I'm coming back, and I'm bringing Doctor Who back. Let me know in the comments below what you think about any of that. Please like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.